I'm expecting some big time changes this off season from Brandon Bean. And the main reason for that is our salary cap. Currently the Buffalo Bills owe $21 million. We are $21 million over the cap. We have some players on this team that we need to discuss whether we are gonna trade them, restructure them. And you know, a lot of people I think are missing the boat here. Um, and the big thing here is transitional tags, franchise tags, as well as base salary restructures. Now, base salary restructures really, really are basically signing a player to a longer term deal. They're taking that base salary and they're turning it and converting it into a signing bonus. So you really want to use it on players that you want here long term because you're going to be owing this player money for years to come. So I look at a player like Josh Allen highest paid player this year and for years going forward but we know the contract that was signed with Josh Allen and the relationship that Josh Allen has with Brandon Bean I, I really believe this is a key thing to take a look at and I checked it out online a base salary restructure for Josh Allen would save the Buffalo Bills 20 million dollars for this upcoming season like I said bills are over the cap 21 million dollars by doing this the bills would only be over the cap by 1 million dollars instantly instantly some other players I was taking a look at at this team that we need to discuss here right you know, I, I think the question should be posed. I don't think the Bills are going to do this, but a trade of a player, right? Maybe a trade of a Stefan Diggs, who is currently the second highest paid player on this team, owing $18 million against the cap. But like I said, my personal belief is that the Bills will do a base salary restructure for Josh Allen. The Bills will only be owing about $1 million over the cap at this point. So do I think a trade of Stefan Diggs is foreseeable? You maybe couple that with our first round pick to trade up for another wide receiver in this year's draft, basically converting Stefan Diggs $18 million to a rookie wide receiver, kind of similar to what the Vikings did with Stefan Diggs and us and Justin Jefferson. There are some wide receivers coming out, but we got to dive into those and see how dynamic and if that is really going to be worth it. Some other problems that we see here with the Buffalo Bills is trying to re-sign Tremaine Edmonds, Jordan Poyer, Devin Singletary. Are we gonna have money to do that? And like I said, if we do this base salary restructure for Josh Allen, we're only $1 million over the cap. We got to take a look at guys like Jordan Poyer, right? And I believe there's other moves that the Bills can make right now. Some other guys with some bloated salaries on this team. Mitch Morris could actually restructure. Maybe we work a deal with him. Micah Hyde working a deal with him. He's owed $10 million this upcoming season. And then another potential trade I want to discuss here, which breaks my heart. Um, Sean McDermott and Trey White, right? Would the Buffalo Bills consider trading Trey White? I mean, he's young, the first draft pick of Trey White, still considered to be on track to be in the Hall of Fame, one of the most dynamic cornerbacks in the NFL. But you look at a guy like Josh Norman, right? Who was with Sean McDermott in Carolina for only four seasons. Sean McDermott and Trey White have now been together for six seasons. Trey White coming off that ACL. It's tough. And consider the relationship that Trey White had with Kim Pagula and everything that's going on there. You know, it's just a tough situation. I don't know. I, I'm sure Trey White would probably prefer warmer weather, and I'm sure we would get a great offer for that. And Trey White is set to make a lot of money for the Buffalo Bills. Do I think we should do that? <laughs> I, I would like to have Trey White here long term, but if that's something that they feel as though needs to be done, I am wholeheartedly trust in Ding Brandon Breen to pull a rabbit out of the hat this offseason. So getting back to Jordan Poyer to see what is the great plan here. What should we do with Jordan Poyer? And I, I think he is a great candidate for a franchise tag or a transitional tag. We need to discuss what a transitional tag is and a franchise tag. Franchise tag, you are going to be paying that player the top it's five salaries, average salaries in the NFL the last five years. So that basically guarantees Jordan Poyer is definitely going to be here, but we're going to pay him a pretty penny to, to have him stay in Buffalo. 
Um, I believe it was like $14 million is the, is the franchise tag for safeties. Now, what's different with the transitional tag is that transitional tags, you pay a top average of the top 10 salaries, so it's much less. And I believe the transitional tag was only $10 million for Jordan Poyer this upcoming year. Still $4 million difference. Transitional tag also allows other teams in the NFL to make an offer against Jordan Poyer. So this is a way to get a fair market value for Jordan Poyer or to find out what the fair market value for Jordan Poyer is. Now, in my mind, Jordan Poyer has clearly earned a franchise tag. I mean, Jordan Poyer should, could very well get paid the highest safety in the NFL be made that this off season. But if we're going to pay him a franchise tag for this upcoming year and only pay him an average of the top five, the previous five years, that's a great fair market value uh, for Jordan Poyer. And the Bills should definitely be considering that. Now, when you look at a guy like Tremaine Edmonds, Tremaine Edmonds, has he um, earned the top five salaries at the position, at the middle linebacker position, going back the previous five years? And he's young, but he has not earned that, I don't think. you know. So my thought here. Buffalo Bills could very well utilize a franchise tag on Jordan Poyer and then a transitional tag on Tremaine Edmonds. It's much harder to determine the fair market value for Tremaine Edmonds right now. Buffalo Bills could very well utilize that transitional tag on Tremaine Edmonds, let other teams make offers, and then that other offer can be matched by the Buffalo Bills if we want to retain him. Now, something to keep in mind is that there are some dynamic free agents, linebackers, um, Edwards from the Eagles who just balled out this Super Bowl and in, in season in, in free agency this upcoming year. The Bills may consider splurging on, you know, so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Devin Singletary, unfortunately, I don't know if we're going to be able to retain him. We have Naeem Hines. We have James Cook. You know, we're really utilizing Josh Allen out of the shotgun, that RPO style run game. I don't know if that's Devin Singletary's strong suit. Uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But I am expecting at least one big change, one big shuffle going on here. That base salary restructure for Josh Allen seems to me to make the most sense, saving $20 million instantly. And we could do the same with other players that we believe in long term, that want to be here long term. I think Deion Dawkins is another player that likes the snow, likes the cold, probably wouldn't mind signing a longer term deal with the Buffalo Bills. Plus, he's young enough. Um, you have to have a relationship with the players. And we know that Brandon Bean, Sean McDermott, I think we have a strong enough relationship to potentially talk about trading Stefan Diggs with Stefan Diggs, potentially talk about trading Trey White with Trey White. Um, are those real possibilities? Let me know in the comments section below. Hit like, subscribe for future content like this. Um, Going to be doing more macro type stuff like this instead of all the quick elements and short clips and everything that causes freaking the tension problems. I'm just going to be doing this, giving you guys some insight into the Buffalo Bills. So I hope you guys appreciated it. Check you guys soon. Go Bills. Peace.